Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Rex, we're here, and welcome back to yet another gimmick tutorial. Today we're going to be doing is going over a flashlight like the ones you guys see right here. Now, the way that I have this set up is so it works with sort of a platform engine and that my player controls with platform controls and the light sort of stays with him wherever he goes, whatever he does. And um, if you guys want to change this to maybe you have like a character with top down controls or maybe you just want like a spotlight instead of uh, you know an actual flashlight, I can show you guys or rather I will show you guys how to do that and how to change that in the code and whatnot. So anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and exit out of this, head back into Game Maker and see how this all works. Now, really quickly before I officially begin the tutorial, I want to go ahead and give credit where credit is due. Um, the system that I'm using in this tutorial is actually a system that I found from a good friend of mine by the name of RealTestGML. And uh, if you haven't seen him or know who he is, whatever, go ahead and look him up on YouTube. He's an awesome gaming tutorialist and does a ton of other stuff as well. Really cool guy. And uh, I've basically just taken his system that he used in that tutorial and modified it to my liking. So, credit to him. Shout out to that guy. And, uh, yeah. Alright, so starting off with these sprites here, um, and there actually is a reason why I want to go over the sprites as well. Um, so starting off with the sprite player here, the origin on the player you'll notice is centered. Now the reason for this is wherever you have the origin set on your player sprite, that is where the actual light sprite is going to sort of emit from, so just keep that in mind. Now with the light sprite, uh, we have sort of the same thing, wherever the origin is set on the light sprite, that is where it's going to go ahead and be created from, or at least be set to, excuse me. Um, and so, like, I have it set to the very end, so it's going to snap to the player's origin. So I guess it's like origin to origin, that sounds kind of weird, but that's <laughs> basically, that's how it works. Alright, so now for, uh, for the actual sprite itself, make sure to, oh, really quickly, uh, the dimensions of my sprite are 128 by 64. Whatever you have your sprite's dimensions to, your light sprite, it doesn't matter, it will work regardless. So, just wanted to get that out of the way. Um, now, when you're actually drawing the light sprite sprite, um, make sure to draw it in a horizontal fashion rather than a vertical fashion. Just because I've heard that it works better if it's horizontal. I haven't tried this, but I've just, something I'd heard, so thought I'd go ahead and pass it along to you guys. If you want to try it in a vertical way, you know, be a little bit rebellious, uh, that's fine. Go ahead and feel free to do so, but I've just heard it works better horizontally. Also, make sure to color completely white, alright? So, with that, that is all I want to go over for the sprites. Uh, don't need to go over the background. Don't really need to go over the player, but I will anyway, just in case this tutorial doesn't work for you on the first try, I don't want you to think that, oh, maybe it's something he did in the player object, that's why it's not working for me. No, actually all we have in here is some gravity and some simple movement, <laughs> along with uh, just some collision with the ground. So, that's that. Uh, nothing to show in there. Uh, but again, just thought I'd show it anyway, just in case anyone's curious, and for that first time thing. So, in the actual light object, the actual object that applies to this tutorial, first thing I want to go over here is the depth. Make sure to set the depth of this object to the highest negative number that's in your game. So, if like you have an object in your game that's set to like negative 10, that's the highest negative number that you have in your game. For, uh, as far as objects are concerned, make sure to go ahead and set this to at least like negative 11, just so it kind of trumps over everything else. And uh, the example that Real that GML or GML GML used in his tutorial was if you had like a zombie that was a higher depth than the light, the zombie would like basically show over the light, thus ruining the sort of light illusion. So yeah, keep that in mind. Highest negative depth, you'll be in good hands. <laughs> That's kind of a weird way to say it, but, you know, first thing that came to mind. Alright, so in the create event here, uh, we basically have just some simple service creation code. Or I guess it's not too simple, but it's basically just service creation code. Nothing in which you need to mess with. The only thing uh, that I want to show you is this variable here, this dark variable. If you want to go and rename this, you can, but it's basically just making sure... Uh, or, well, it's there so we can keep track of the surface and edit it as we like and sort of have something to call on, I guess, later in the code. But uh, if you rename this, make sure to go ahead and also keep it consistent with all the other dark variables and rename those as well. And uh, also, right here, this uh, room width and height, if you want to go and change those, uh, you can. That's basically where the surface is being created, the black surface. So if I show the room right now, there's nothing here. It's not black. But the surface is that giant black spot, so wherever you want that created, go ahead and switch up those values, and uh, yeah, that's how you do that. Alright, 
So, now into the step event. Step event uh, is just X and Y coordinates, which I've set to my OBJ player X and OBJ player dot Y, so it sticks with my player. If you want it to stick with another object, you can go ahead and uh, just do that, I guess, put that object's coordinates. Or if you don't even want coordinates, go and delete it all and put whatever you like in there. So, yeah. <laughs> That's how you do that. Alright, end step. Uh, so what we have here, again, more surface creation, and here's that dark variable again, so if you did rename that, again, keep it consistent, and uh, rename it here. Okay, so there's only one thing I want to point out here, and that is the mouse underscore X and mouse underscore Y. So this is how uh, the light is being controlled. Remember when I showed it off earlier, I was kind of moving it around the mouse. If you want it to be moved another way, <laughs> you go ahead and replace this mouse Y and mouse X. So that is how you do that. And finally in the draw event, we have a very simple line of code to simply draw surface <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, in our X view and our Y view. Now, you probably want to keep those. Um, and then one thing you want to change, again, here's that dark variable. Uh, if you changed it earlier, I know I'm telling you for like the millionth time, but I just want to make sure you understand. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, rename it right here. All right. So uh, when you're in the room, just simply just place your player and place your light and go and run the game and it should all work like this. So with that, that is the end of the tutorial guys. Um, hopefully everything, uh, all your questions have been answered. Hopefully this works for you guys and if it doesn't or if you do have any questions or comments for that matter, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and uh, I'll go ahead and make sure to check those out. So without further ado, uh, until next tutorial, until next time, this has been Rex Furry in case I didn't already say that and uh, I'll see you all then.